running high for most of this one, but what can you say about the way that you guys fought until the end? Yeah, I mean, uh, we definitely competed, but you know, that should be a given. You know, regardless of who we play, what the situation is, you know, we get paid good money to compete. But uh, obviously, you know, they had the little skirmish between Mace and Favors. Uh, I liked how we picked it up after that to close out that quarter. Um, and our second half defense was so much better than our first half. I mean, they shot 56 from the field in our first half. They made 13 threes. Second half, they only shoot 30 from the field. We hold them to six of 19 from three. So, give ourselves a chance, you know, with everything against us, uh, which which I like to see from our guys. Uh, I probably played Will and Gary a little too uh, uh, too many minutes, but you know, those guys look good out there, and uh, they're a good team. This is a good team at home. that's playing at a high level. Uh, we we got to learn from it. Get ready for a home back to back on Thursday and uh, on Friday and Saturday. In the first half, in particular, what led to those open three looks? Yeah, we had uh, we. We had a, you know, yeah, I want to make sure I say this the right way. We just were not mentally prepared, some of us. Tonight. Some of us were not mentally ready to play this game. Some of us were not in tune to what we were trying to do defensively. And we had breakdown after breakdown after breakdown. And I got on guys at halftime. I said, we're on pace to go up a record number of threes in the game. Uh, and that's not who we've been all year. We've been a very good three-point defensive team. So they responded. They heard it. They responded. They owned it. And the second half was much better. But, you know, uh, Communication is such a simple thing, and we did, we don't honor it. And if we are talking, we're not listening. And you, know, you can't leave Kyle Corbett wide open. So too many breakdowns first half, second half was better, but you don't want to dig yourselves a hole. Donovan Mitchell was really able to create off of that high ball screen situation. Just yeah. what did you see from him tonight in the way that he took advantage of it? Yeah, they spaced the floor with shooters. They put him in pick and roll with Gobert. Gobert's on the rim for lobs. You got to take care of that. They kick out the shooters. I give Tory credit. He was battling. He was trying to get into them. Um, and Donovan's a hell of a player. He's been playing at a very high level for the last 10 games, whatever it is. So he had another great game. Uh, we have to be better in terms of being into the ball, being up at the level of screens, not allowing him the, the daylight that he had. He was able to split the big sometimes, get to the paint. Puts a lot of pressure on your defense. So uh, you know, hopefully we can guard him better next time we play. You mentioned playing Will and Gary maybe a couple more minutes than you should have, but it seemed like they were back to their old selves mm -hmm. a little bit tonight. What did you see from them? Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at Will's line right here. 22 points, five assists, nine rebounds. And uh, I thought he was really good. Shot four or five from three. Gary had that late dunk, very impressive dunk that showed he's got that explosion back uh, and had some really good moments out there. So um, I've said it all along, just because Will Barton's not starting is, does not mean he's not at starting small forward. And I, I think as this minute restriction gets higher and higher, I think Gary started tonight. We'll get Will back in there uh, very, very soon. Just Only eight minutes for Malik Beasley tonight. Uh, what informed that decision? Was it was he hurt or just? No, he wasn't hurt. It was just uh, I went with the guys that I felt was going to give us the best chance to win. Just in terms of that skirmish, was there any concern that some of the guys veered a little bit too far from the bench or anything along those lines? No, I mean I didn't see it. I was out. I was you know out in the middle of it, but I, I know I think our assistant coaches want to make sure that you know, nobody was on the court. So I, I don't. I have no doubts that our guys stayed where they were supposed to stay. And uh, it's unfortunate that incident escalated the way it did uh, prior to that happening. Uh, from my vantage point, very clearly, you can see Derek Favors, Favors pulling Mason's arm. And then after that, it kind of just erupted. So uh, it would have been nice for that to have been diffused uh, right when that happened. Uh, but you know that's part of the NBA, it happens. Uh, but again, after, once that happened, it kind of woke us up. And I wish it would have happened earlier <laughs> uh, because we maybe would have woke up a little bit quicker. You've talked about how you sort of like it when Jamal plays with emotion. How do you feel when Nicola plays with that same emotion and that edge when he sort of gets mixed up in it a bit? Oh, I love it. I mean, you know, we want to be a team that has toughness. And, uh, you know, there's a fine line between toughness and being dirty. And they're not a dirty team, either are we. They play extremely hard. We try to play extremely hard. So I think it was two quality opponents in the same division uh, that are fighting for the same thing. And uh, when Nicola plays with emotion, uh, I think it's great. I mean, people know he's our best player. They're going to go after him. And I think he's done a really good job of handling that. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks Coach. Thanks, Appreciate coach. it.